What's up? Welcome to your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Monday, July 8th, 2024. Plowing through a summer here. We've got uh, a new topic here I wanted to bring up because uh, we have a huge game coming up in the middle of October. And because of recent events that have happened on the recruiting trail with a certain, let's say, a school with a duck for a mascot, uh, I wanted to dig into this Oregon program, this Oregon team, and and kind of get an early preview of what these guys bring to the table. Um, they've snagged a couple of five stars from us this past week, so let's let's uh, let's start picking these guys apart, get an idea of of what they are, who they are, um, get to know their team a little bit because um, their first year in the conference. Obviously, uh, we haven't really had to real worry about them in the past. So now we do, they're a new rival and they're, they're going to be a big rival. They're going to be a serious contender. Uh, they may even surpass the cheaters as our uh, biggest rival in the conference. So let's talk about it. We're talking just offense today. Um, this coming week, I'll do another episode on just the defense because there's so much to get to. So um, according to uh, Phil Steele's toughest schedule rankings, Going back to 2021, Oregon was 56. 2022, they were 33rd. 2023, 68th. And this year, 2024, they are 41st. So these guys don't schedule tough games, especially out of conference. And they're no longer playing in that soft-ass Pac-12 or whatever you want to call it. So um, welcome to the Big Ten. You're, you will play some tough games, to be sure. But uh, let's talk about their head coach. Dan Lanning, he's 38 years old, so relatively young in his third year. He's 22 and 5, uh, 2 and 0 in, in bowl games. And uh, against top 25 teams, though, he's just 7 and 5. So a little bit of work to be done there against higher ranked teams. Uh, he was the former DC at Georgia in, uh, let's see, from 2019 to 2021. He had the nation, nation's best defense in 2021. Uh, but last year, they lost to Washington twice. I think it was within – we were both scores within like three points. Uh, made some maybe ultra-aggressive coaching decisions. But uh, he's also lost to Washington three times over the last two years. So they kind of got his number. So uh, then his coordinator, second-year OC, Will Stein, he was the offensive coordinator at UTSA back in 2022. They were putting up some serious yards back then. Third year, D.C., Tosh Lapoy. Uh, he was Alabama's D.C. Uh, in 2017 and 2018, former NFL D-line coach the last three years. So now let's get into um, some numbers on offense. In 2023, last season, they uh, attempted 36.7 pass attempts per game. They averaged uh, 31.2 rush attempts per game. So pretty much a fi almost a 50-50 split there. Uh, last year, they uh, averaged 347 yards per game in uh, throwing the ball and three and a half touchdowns per game throwing the ball. Then uh, rushing, they averaged 184.5 yards per game on the ground. That's moving it. And a nice 5.9 yard average per carry and 2.4 touchdowns per game rushing the ball. Um, yeah. So returning production in 2024, Oregon's 28th in the country, 68% um, of their offensive returning production. That's a uh, 45th in the country. Overall, they're 28th. If you include the defense, they are 70th, 70%, uh, 70%, sorry. 27th on, on defense. So we're turning more on defense, obviously. Um, so let's let's look at the Big Ten unit rankings. Um, according to Phil Steele, quarterbacks, Ohio State has the fifth rank quarterback in the Big Ten quarterback room. This is the entire room. Oregon has the first. He, Phil Steele really loves Dylan Gabriel for some reason, um, just because he's played a lot. I don't know. Anyway, running back room, the Buckeyes are first in the Big Ten. Oregon's fourth. Uh, receivers, Buckeyes are second in the Big Ten. Oregon is first, according to Phil. O-linemen, 
Ohio State is second in the Big Ten. Oregon is first. So a lot of um, firsts there for for the Oregon Ducks. Now, uh, the Ducks lost uh, quarterback Bo Nix to the NFL draft, but they then they go in and, and into the portal, bring out Dylan Gabriel. Uh, plus, they have a top five recruiting class and transfer class, both. They do have to travel to Michigan this year to the Cheaters, so that might be interesting with uh, going against a good defense there. But uh, Ohio State, they get Ohio State at home in Eugene. We know that. And they avoid uh, Penn State and Iowa, two uh, very tough defenses. Um, all Big Ten team players, first team that Phil Steele has uh, Dylan Gabriel on his first team, wide receiver Tez Johnson, and uh, tackle a Johnny Cornelius, all first team Big Ten. And then second team, he has wide receiver Evan Stewart. We'll get into him and tight end Terrence Fergus. Now, um, Bo Nix was a finalist for the Heisman last year, where we remember that. He had threw for a school record, 4,500 yards, uh, 45 TDs, three picks, uh, added in some, some 234 yards rushing, six touchdowns. So he's off to the NFL. Now they bring in Oklahoma quarterback Dylan Gabriel from the portal. Um, he He's kind of been a model of consistency. If you go back to his days at UCF even, his his first year threw for 3,600 yards, 60% completions, 29 TDs, 7 picks. The next year, virtually the same numbers in 2020, uh, 3,500 yards, 60% completions, 32 TDs, 4 picks. He was injured in 2021, got that extra year on the back end. 2022 at Oklahoma, 3,200 yards, 63% completions, 25 TDs, six interceptions. Last year, 3,600 yards, uh, up to a 69% completion percentage, uh, 30 touchdowns, six picks. Uh, Also chipped in last year, uh, 90 carries, 93 carries, 373 yards, and 12 touchdown runs. So um, he's a kind of a do-it-all guy back there, uh, but he's not real big. So if you get a shot on him, you got to take it. So quarterback room is strong. You got a very experienced, slippery little guy back there, and he's a lefty. Never trust a lefty, except if you're a fan of this show. Um, running backs, Phil has him ranked number 16 in the country. The Ducks are replacing uh, last year's top rusher, Bucky Irving. He ran for over 2,000 yards. Um, Jordan James, he's back 5'10". He's 5'10", 210 pounds. Uh, He rushed for 759 yards last year, 7.1 yards per carry, and 11 touchdowns. You also got Noah Whittington, uh, kind of a shorter dude, 5'8", 194. He's a junior. Uh, He rushed for over 1,500 yards in his four-year career, but he's coming off a season-ending injury. Now, you also got a couple more dudes that might chip in a little bit. Jaden Lamar, Dante Dowdell. They brought in a three-star transfer from an FCS school, Jay Harris. He had 1,400 yards and a 5.9 yards per carry average last year in FCS. I think it was like Missouri State or something. And they do have a three-star 2024 running back commit, uh, Dwan Riggs. Now, Jordan James played in just 10 games last year. Uh, Well, that was 2022, my bad. Uh, 14 games last year. Got almost to 800 yards, we we mentioned. Uh, In 2022, though, as a freshman, just 10 games, 189 yards. Didn't do much. Now, Noah Whittington, he's played a lot of ball. Uh, Started his, his career at Western Kentucky. And in Conference USA back then, um, that last year with Oregon, just just played four games due to the injury and had 146 and two touchdowns. 2022 with Oregon, he uh, yeah he was a sophomore. 13 games, he only had 139 attempts, 779 yards and five touchdowns. So he's he's going to add a little bit of spice to the equation, but. Jordan James is the guy to watch out for. Uh, Receivers. Phil calls this his number one unit in the country. They lost uh, Franklin to the NFL, added Evan Stewart from Texas A&M. Then they got the tight end, Terrence Ferguson. um, And they got three more highly touted true freshmen. 
But uh, Tez Johnson is the guy. First off, he's a junior, five foot ten, 160 pounds. He caught 86 passes for 1,182 yards, two touchdowns last year. Nice little 13.7 average. Um, he played at Troy before that at 2020 through 2022. Put up some some good numbers, but really exploded when he got to Oregon. Helps that he had a good, experienced quarterback. Well, decent. I'm not a big Bonex fan. You guys know that. So, uh, Tez Johnson is the guy. Uh, Tra Tra yeah, Treshawn Holden, he's a senior, 6'3", 214. So, he's your big-bodied outside guy. Um, played at Bama for three years. Uh, didn't play a lot, but he played. He was there. Um, so, in 14 games last year, Holden had uh, – 37 catches, 452 yards, six touchdowns uh, at Bama. Really didn't do much. He had a year of 25 catches, 21 catches, a few hundred yards. So um, really got to keep your eye on him being a senior and that big-bodied guy. You got you can't let him get a, get his uh, mitts on you. Uh, then you got a, a USC transfer, um, Gary Bryant. He's 5'11", 180 pounds. He's a junior. Uh, he had 442 yards last year with Oregon. He transferred in in 2023, uh, 14.7 uh, yards per catch, just four touchdowns, though. At um, USC, he had kind of a, a weird career, must be an injury in there. Five games in 2020, then 10 games in 2021, uh, but only had 579 yards and seven touchdowns in 2021. Then in 2022, just three three games with two catches. So um, he's another guy. Then you got the transfer from AM. and um, Ad Evan Stewart, excuse me, 6'3", 175, tall, skinny dude, um, top receiver in the portal. He uh, last year played in eight games, 38 catches, 514 yards, four touchdowns. As a freshman, played in 10 games, 53 catches, and uh, 649 yards, two touchdowns. A&M just never could figure out that quarterback position, could they? <laughs> and unfortunately, everybody else paid the price. Uh, the senior tight end I mentioned, Terrence Ferguson, he's 6'6", 248, caught 42 passes last year, has 13 career touchdown receptions. So he's – Somebody over the middle to to keep an eye on. You got to watch him. Played in every game so far. Um, again, thirty two catches in twenty twenty two. Five touchdowns that year. A twelve point two average. That's the that average is a killer. Uh, he had a nine point nine average and six touchdowns last year. <clears throat> so let's look at the big boys up front. The offensive line. Phil Steele has them as the number three O line. They have one hundred and forty four career starts. Let's start from uh, left tackle and, and work our way across. Uh, Josh Connerly, he's your left tackle. He's a junior, 6'4", 294 from Seattle, Washington. Uh, he had 14 starts last year, a 65 PFF run grade, though. Uh, then your left guard, Marcus Harper, he's a senior, 6'3", 313 from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, had 10 starts total in his career, a 52 PFF run grade. Then their center, uh, Yapani Lalulu, La uh, sophomore, he's 6'2", 355, that's hefty, uh, from Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, he had one start, played in 14 games, though, last year, and uh, played some guard last year, didn't play center. Um, then your right guard, Matthew Bedford, he's a senior, 6'6", 310 from Cordova, Tennessee, he has 39 starts in his career. He transferred over from Indiana. And then your right tackle is uh, the all-conference guy, uh, Johnny Cornelius. He's a senior, 6'5", 310 from White Plains, New York, has 22 starts. Uh, his numbers are impressive. He's allowed pressure on only 2.1% of his total pass-blocking snaps, uh, the lowest rate of any returning power forward tackle. So. He's going to be a tough one to, to get pressure on. So, uh, yeah. Um, rushing stats last year, 31 carries per game. I mentioned that, 185 yards per game, 5.9 average per carry. 
uh, passing, 77% completions, 347 yards, uh, only five sacks given up, 347 yards per game on average. So this team likes to, you know, go f- almost a 50-50 split, maybe 55-45 in favor of the pass. really depends on uh, how good they feel about Dylan Gabriel. So this offense is legit. They're going to try and, and ground and pound you, then pop some some big plays. So they definitely uh, bring a lot to the table, especially on offense compared to everybody else in the Big Ten. This is the second best offense to the Buckeyes for sure. So let me know what you guys think. Did the Ducks intimidate you? Can you be intimidated by a freaking duck? A duck, a goddamn duck. I'm not. Anyways, yeah, welcome to the Big Ten. Again, this is a tough schedule. This is not your, uh, you know, Charmin, soft, Pac-12. It's the Big Ten. So, good luck. All right. So, I got for you today. Talk to you tomorrow. Go Bucks. Screw the Ducks. <laughs>